Yo, it's your boy Red, and we're going to review the second book, or the second season, of The Last Kids on Earth. Now, I love the first book, I love that first episode, right? What the fuck did I give? Let me see. So I gave the first episode, or the first season, a 9 out of 10. It was a great episode, I love the music, the characters, stuff like that, right? So this season continues right after that. Um, our heroes are dealing, leaving, <laughs> hold on, are dealing, living with each other. Um, which is something actually right now we could all be late right being in the house stuck in the house with everyone you know it gave her a little frustrating after a while so it's good to see that um, eventually you know they gotta go out our leader Jack wants everyone to be more like a family because you know Jack he basically didn't have a family until now basically um, everyone else is you know on their last nerves but it's not like they hate each other right uh, the season introduces something interesting which we saw in the first book the shadowy figure who watches over our you know, group, we find out that they're monsters that have intelligence in a way. Um, they come from the other world. We get ex you know everyone explains everything. Uh, they come from a different world. This person named Razok wants to take over the world and stuff like that. That's why they invaded this world. The dead are just a fraction of what comes from that world. It's an infection, I guess, which is funny. Um, but they're monsters, you know, are part of her army and stuff like that, and. It, basically, we have to stop Razog from entering our world because she didn't enter our world, and it's up to our four heroes to do that. Apparently, <laughs> that of course comes with uh, new characters, actually new monsters that our heroes go and meet, and it's actually really cool seeing all these characters uh, at Joe's Pizza. Apparently, that's where they're hanging out because they love pizza. I don't know, um, <laughs> but it's basically like you know a bar for them. This is basically what they did in their world, and they're doing it here now. Which is cool, right? Um, so yeah, our whole thing becomes part of this quest for our new heroes to... They get a bestiary, basically. Uh, they have to collect samples for each monster. Uh, they haven't been told what it's going to do, but it's pretty obvious. I mean, it's a kid's kid show, right? So it's pretty obvious what's going to happen. Um, with that being said, my favorite monster is the rocks, alright? They're funny. Love those little cute rocks, man. I don't know what you guys say. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, our heroes are back, right? From uh, left to right, we got June. She's uh, basically the only female in the group. <laughs> but she's badass. Uh, she was, you know, ace reporter and all that stuff. She's a tomboyish kind of girl, but she gets shit done, right? Uh, keeps them all on track and stuff like that. Basically, is her mom, even though they called her that once and she got pissed off. <laughs> After that, we got Jack, the leader. Uh, learning too as well uh, he's going through a lot of stuff especially in this season he goes through a lot actually especially the ending damn that was a crazy ass ending um, then we have the muscle Dirk um, we kind of get a little bit from Dirk in this show uh, season but not really he's just there you know being a bully <laughs> and then of course Quint who also gets uh, some, some kind of relationship you know thing with Jack I don't know what's going on there so they go like on a bro adventure <laughs> i don't know anyways uh the relationships are changing jack and uh june seem to have feelings for each other though it's not really explored much just little teasings here and there uh and dirk and quinn are becoming closer together understanding their relationship you know during the whole events of when they were in school they're being a bully and quinn being a nerd um with the adventures they'll come again new monsters that we see big ass monsters some sand monsters fucking invincible invincible invisible monsters <laughs> stuff like that which is cool you know it's always good to see some changes some different monsters the only one we saw in the first season was blarg but now we get to see some other ones uh who eventually are apparently on the service of the you know the woman who wants to take over the world razok or whatever her name is um but with that being said it's still a fucking great show i actually had fun watching this seeing um different adventures we finally get what was it 10 episodes i think it was 10 which is great because you know one episode compared to 10 i'd rather take the 10 right a lot more to watch and i actually watched them all which is great right i enjoyed it and uh, can't wait for the third season there's gonna be a third season because of how it ends right it's always gonna be a cliffhanger you can't have a show without that right i enjoyed it though so that's good um can't wait to see more hopefully we get to see more people i mean they can't be the last four people on earth right Unless that's what the book says. <laughs> I mean, that's funny. Anyways, with that being said, what would I give this one? Hmm. 
I give it an 8 out of 10. Um, yeah, one less point than the other one, uh, the first book I gave it. Basically because there's a couple episodes I would skip. that are kind of like, well, whatever, you know, I already know that this is going to happen. Just skip to the good part. But it does come. I mean, the 10 episodes is not that long, so the good parts do come. And it's great to see that. But uh, thanks for watching. Hit that like, hit that sub, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.